Who's the competition for Ben Johnson down in Charlotte? We'll talk about that. Some free agent talk. Jim Schwartz is back and more. It's a Tuesday edition of Locked on Lions. You are Locked on Lions, your daily Detroit Lions podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hope everybody's doing well and having a fantastic Tuesday. Matt Derry with you. It's Locked On Lions on the Locked On Podcast and Network, your team every day. Today is January 17th, the Tuesday into Wednesday, January 18th. Thanks for making us your first listen and checking us out wherever you get your podcasts and, of course, on the video side on the Locked On Lions YouTube channel. Locked On Lions today is brought to you by a prize picks. Yes, prize picks is daily fantasy made easy. You pick two to five players, and if they score more or less, then their prize picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. First-time users receive a 100% instant deposit match up to 100 bucks with promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com, promo code locked on. Coming up on the show today, Ben Johnson, the hot commodity in Charlotte, will interview for the Carolina Panther job tomorrow. Who's he up against? What kind of competition does he have? What are the chances? that maybe uh, David Tepper, the owner of the Panthers, goes in a different direction. We'll tell you about that coming up momentarily on the show. Also, the Lions have 10 unrestricted free agents, guys that can sign with any team. We'll talk about some of the guys I think are coming back, some of the guys I think will be gone. We'll get into that momentarily. Also, Jim Schwartz has a new job, and Lions attendance up considerably from last year to this year. The most, the biggest percent jump of any team in the NFL. We'll talk about that as well right here on Locked On Lions. Check us out on Twitter at Dairy Speaks at Locked On Lions, the Matt Dairy Facebook fan page as well. And shout out to everybody again watching on the YouTube channel. Please subscribe and check out the shows tomorrow on the program. Yes, Michael Gennaro Valenti from 97 on the ticket will join me tomorrow on this very program. Uh, of course, Afternoon Drive host on the uh, Valeni and Rico show on 97 won the ticket. All right, Ben Johnson tomorrow. Lions offensive coordinator. I went on uh, one of the Tegna TV stations down in Charlotte today and I uh, retweeted it so you can watch it on YouTube uh, and put it out there on Dar- at Dairy Speaks earlier today. But I was on with uh, Nick Carboni, one of the uh, sports anchors down in Charlotte at the Tegna TV station down there. We talked a lot about Ben Johnson. And I was thinking, all right, we talked so much about him being the leading candidate for the Carolina Panthers job, but who else is up for the gig? And and what are the chances maybe David Tepper, the owner of the Panthers, who kind of runs the show down there, uh, goes in a different direction and doesn't hire Ben Johnson? Well, here are the folks so far that have interviewed for the Panthers job. Okay, Uh, Jim Caldwell, yes, Uh, the Lions legend, former Lion head coach, uh, has interviewed for the job. Frank Reich also interviewed for the job, the former Colts head coach. So two guys with experience have already been in there to meet with the Panthers. Their own interim head coach and former defensive coordinator, Steve Wilkes, who did a pretty good job for the Panthers this year. Uh, Yeah, they finished 7-10. and Yeah, they didn't win the NFC South. We saw what the NFC South winner did last night. Tampa Bay, they got the doors blown off against Dallas. But Steve Wilkes is up for the job. I don't think he's going to get it. Shane Steichen is the Philly Eagles, Philadelphia Eagles offensive coordinator. And with their off week last week, he interviewed for the job. Also, being requested to be interviewed, and we'll interview after the playoffs are done, Ken Dorsey, OC of the Bills. Mike Kafka, who I think is awesome, Giants OC, Dallas offensive coordinator and former Lions legend Kellen Moore, of course, backup quarterback to Matthew Stafford, and the Panthers have requested to speak with Sean Payton, uh, but they have not yet spoken with him. Payton says he's interviewing or did interview yesterday for the Houston Texans job and did so virtually. The question for the Saints is, would they want Sean Payton, who's under contract with New Orleans for the next two years, 
would they want him in their division? There's a chance that the Saints tell the Panthers, we're not going to let him go to you. But those are the names that are associated with the Carolina Panthers job. I love Ben Johnson. I hope he stays. I think he's a great candidate. All right, this guy at 36 years old has an opportunity to take a head coaching position. You know, you got to do it. You get to only get that opportunity. You may only get that opportunity once. But there's some pretty strong candidates in there with Ben Johnson. Uh, Dorsey and Kafka and Kellen Moore. Look, Frank Reich probably deserves another shot at a head coaching job. With the Colts, kind of got the raw end of the deal this year. Uh, Indianapolis definitely underachieved. Uh, Reich definitely was not tough enough on that team, but his successor, the guy that took over for him on the interim, Jeff Saturday, won one game (laughs) Uh, when he took over in like week 10. So it's not like the Colts weren't a mess with or without Frank Reich. Um, But those are, those are the candidates that are out there. I'm a Kafka fan. I'm also a big Ben Johnson fan, but I think my Kafka with what he did with the Giants this year, I think we talked about this yesterday a little bit, with Daniel Jones, with getting him better, uh, working alongside Brian Dable, I think it's only a matter of time before Mike Kafka, the Giants offensive coordinator, is a head coach in this league. So we'll have to see about that. I saw Dan Quinn today, the Cowboys defensive coordinator, of course, was the head coach of the Falcons, took him to the Super Bowl. They choked away the 28-3 lead to the Patriots. He's been requested by the Colts as well. But right now, Ben Johnson is interviewed in Indianapolis, interviewed in Houston, and will interview tomorrow for the Carolina Panthers job. And according to Jonathan Jones from CBS Sports, it's Johnson's job to lose. We shall see. Uh, One year as an OC with the Lions, yet is apparently the leader with the Panthers. But again, Carolina could interview Dorsey or Kafka or Kellen Moore and be so impressed that uh, they end up maybe making the call to get somebody else. The hopes here are, of course, here in Detroit with Lions fans like myself and you is that Johnson uh, doesn't get that job and that he stays with the Lions. By the way, don't wouldn't you think the contingency plan for the Lions would be to make Deuce Staley assistant head coach and running backs coach, the offensive coordinator, and call the plays? Possibly. Remember, Dan Campbell could make Staley OC, but still call the plays. We'll have to wait and see on that. All right, uh, coming up next, Lions attendance. Jimmy Handshake is back. Uh, We got to get into that, and uh, we'll do that coming up next right here on Locked on Lions. But first, we got to tell you about our friends at Bet Online. Bet Online, of course is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. You get all the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from pro football to college bowl season, basketball, World Cup. They got it all at betonline.net. If you love sports podcasts, you can even find those as well at BetOnline. What about future bets? Over-under wins next year for the Lions. Um, Pistons are playing a day game on Thursday in Paris against the Bulls. Want to put a little money down? You can do so. At Bet Online. They're the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. Go to the website today, betonline.net, or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, I want to get into some free agency stuff with the Lions and some players that I think um, should stay, will stay. Some players I think should go, will go. We got to do that. The Lions have 10. Unrestricted free agents. That means the likes of John Kaminsky, Deshaun Elliott, DJ Chark, Isaiah Bugs, Jamal Williams, Will Harris, Michael Badgley, Josh Woods, Evan Brown, and Alex Anzalone are all free to sign with other teams. We talked about this a little bit the other day on Sports Final Edition on Channel 4 with Jamie Edmonds, but first name to me, that comes to mind that has to stay and will stay uh, on that list is Jamal Williams. Um, He embodies everything that the Lions are about. He's a gritty guy. He's tough, hard-nosed, loves the city, is a leader in that locker room, and wants to come back. You know, um, I think it was Brad Holmes the other day 
uh, when he met with the media, said he met with pretty much every player and all of the free agents, the guys that are unrestricted, restricted, everybody. We're just talking about the 10 unrestricteds today. All said they want to come back. All want to continue to be a part of the program. Problem is that's not reality. You can't re-sign everybody. You got to be able to keep some money uh, under the cap to use on other players. You can't just bring your entire roster back. That's not how it works. And there's going to be some guys that have told Holmes and Campbell they want to stay that Holmes and Campbell might not want to keep. But first and foremost, I think the first guy that is on the list that you have to keep and you want around is Jamal Williams. Lions running back room is pretty good. Craig Reynolds, Justin Jackson, De- DeAndre Swift, guys like that. But Jamal Williams played every game. Jamal Williams was a workhorse. And he's just so much fun and enjoyable to talk to, loves being a Lion, stuck up for the team. Remember his interview on the field with Melissa Stark after week 18, wants to stay, and I think they'll find a way to keep him. He's number one on my list of guys that I definitely think are coming back. I also think John Kaminsky, the commish, is coming back. Um, The Lions have a need for that hybrid defensive tackle defensive end. Uh, Detroit had a, took a flyer on him on a one-year deal uh, last uh, summer, uh, spring, when no teams wanted him, and he had kind of struggled a little bit with the Falcons. And I think John Kaminsky, as is, is Ross Tucker told us last week, is kind of a poor man's Aiden Hutchinson. But number 79 had a big season for the Lions, and they need depth along that defensive line. And they need to keep him. And that's a guy I think will be back. I also think Isaiah Bugs will be back publicly on his Twitter said, I want to be back next year. Um, I don't think the Lions are going to stand pat at D-line and just say, oh yeah, we're going to bring back Hutchinson, Charles Harris, Romeo, the whole D-line's coming back. I don't think that's the case. I think they're going to have to choose between Romeo and Charles Harris on who they want to let go to um, save some money under the cap and free up some space. I think Michael Brockers is gone. That'll free up like $6 million. Isaiah Bugs and I think Kaminsky would both come back on one to two year deals, maybe team options, who knows. Uh, but the Lions need to keep building along that defensive line. And that's a position that Brad Holmes, you know, really is big on. He's got Josh Pascal coming back. He drafted him. James Houston, you can tell he likes drafting D linemen. Aiden Hutchinson. I think Bugs and Kaminsky both will be back. Also on the list, you know, this is an interesting one, is Will Harris. Will Harris has kind of found, we found something here with him. And you guys know from listening to Locked on Lions over the last few years, I've not been that big of a Will Harris fan, especially when he had to play safety. But this year at cornerback, I thought he had a pretty decent year as sort of your nickel guy, number three guy, and all of that. And... I wouldn't mind the Lions bringing Will Harris back. Is it a lock? No. Um, But I could see a scenario where Will Harris returns because you're not sure about the fifth-year option for Jeffrey Okuda. He was not drafted by this regime. Neither was Harris, but still. But you can never have enough corners. And with Amanio Ruaria, you got to figure you're going to be let go. Um, Jerry Jacobs back. Okuda likely back. Will Harris is a guy you have to bring back. You you can't have an entire room of new cornerbacks. Uh, We already saw A.J. Parker has left the Lions to go to San Francisco. So I could see Will Harris returning to this team. Josh Woods is also unrestricted, the backup linebacker. Very good special teamer. Uh, I think they'll find a way to bring him back. Very valuable, especially on kick coverage. It just seemed like every single time the Lions got to stop on kick coverage, shy of the 20, shy of the 25. It was number 51, Josh Woods, making that play. He's not going to cost you a whole heck of a lot, and I think he will come back, and he was a captain on special teams as well. Uh, I would say Alex Anzalone likely would come back on another one-year deal. If Aaron Glenn has his say, I think he would want Brad Holmes to bring Anzalone back. Can the Lions upgrade at linebacker, especially on the interior? Yes, they can. Uh, Malcolm Rodriguez had a really good rookie year, kind of flamed out a little bit at the end, didn't get as many snaps the last few weeks, but Rodrigo is back. 
Uh, Derek Barnes is back. Maybe they would want to upgrade um, at linebacker, but I think Anzalone has a chance uh, to be back, but may end up getting more years and more money from another team. Keep that one in mind. Evan Brown is another one that I think could be gone and could be signed by a team to play center. Evan Brown's a better center than he is a right guard. But you can't just keep him as your backup center. He started as a right guard this past year. Halapulavati Vitae is under contract for next year, but again, could be a cap casualty. But I think Evan Brown ends up signing someplace else as a starting center at a decent price. Wasn't great at right guard. Wasn't terrible. Uh, I think the Lions could upgrade at right guard if they wanted to, if they wanted to get rid of Vitae and let Evan Brown walk. Um, but he did a pretty good job and was pretty solid, especially as a backup center two years ago. But this past year, I thought he regressed a little bit. Um, DJ Chark is an interesting one. I don't see a scenario where the Lions bring him back, nor do I see a scenario that they bring Deshaun Elliott back. And they're good football players. But Deshaun Elliott likely is going to go somewhere where he would start. But next year, the Lions are going to have Tracy Walker back from injury and Kirby Joseph. So is Deshaun Elliott, who's a veteran player, would he come back to be the third safety? I doubt it. Could happen. You never know. But wouldn't Deshaun Elliott want to go somewhere else to start? To me, next year, Tracy Walker has to be back as a starter. And Kirby Joseph is a stud, has to be back as a starter. DJ Chark, yes, would play on this team. Would want to come back. Has said publicly, told Justin Rogers of the Detroit News, man, I want to be a part of this. But you've got Amon Ross St. Brown. You've got to give Jamison Williams more opportunities. Um you know, Josh Reynolds is 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 under contract to be back. Um, and I, I I don't see a scenario where Chark would want to kind of go lower on the totem pole. And I, I would think that um, the Lions would want to bring DJ Chark back. And maybe there's that could happen. But they paid him $10 million this past year. And they knew that he was going to get a lot of reps and be a starter uh, opposite of Amon Ross St. Brown. Um, because Jamison Williams wasn't going to be playing until November and December. So I'd love Chark to come back too, but it's a, it could be a numbers game at wide receiver. They've got to give Jamison Williams more opportunities, and certainly Amon Ross St. Brown is back as well. Uh, the last one is interesting. Michael Badgley, the money badger at kicker. Uh, do you re-sign him? Or, you know, I'm sure there's lots of Michigan fans that would love the Lions to draft Jake Moody and you know, there's always that notion about drafting kickers and everything else, but uh, Badgley was pretty good. Unfortunately, his last field goal attempt went wide left at Lambeau Field, but it seems like he stabilized things some this year. He's been the best kicker the Lions have had the last two years, but again, that's not saying much. Uh, they have not had good success at kicker, but I could see them bringing him back low salary, something like that. And then if he gets beaten out by a um, a rookie during training camp, then you let him go. So that's what I look at as far as the 10 unrestricted free agents that the Lions have. Jim Schwartz gets a job and Lions attendance spiked this year. We will uh, talk about that coming up next. But first, prize picks. Did you play prize picks last night during the Monday night game? Did you have Dak Prescott throwing for two or more touchdowns? If you did, you were a winner. He threw for four and actually ran for one. Prize picks is a lot of fun. It's daily fantasy that's easy. Play a little more or less. You do it for NBA, NHL. Just pick two to five players. And if they score more or less than their prize picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. I mentioned before, NFL, this weekend you play. NHL, tonight. NBA, college basketball, it's all there for you at prizepicks.com or on the app. And entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. Download the app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play Daily Fantasy Sports. First-time users receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code LOCKEDON. If you deposit $100, prizepicks will give you $100. If you deposit 50 
Prize Picks will give you $50. Don't forget to enter promo code LOCKDOWN at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. All right, news of the day. Number one, Sports Business Journal has come out with attendance figures from last season and this season. And the Detroit Lions were number one. They spiked more than any team for home attendance this year by a whopping 23%. Now, again, the team sucked last year, won three games and was in a rebuild. Then you got hard knocks. You got some fun players that you're starting to like. Uh, uh, The rookies came on. Aiden Hutchinson, I think, helped with the attendance. And the Lions jumped up 23%, the most of any team in the NFL this year. Kudos to the Lions for doing that. And it wasn't even close. The Jaguars and Commanders were second, tied at a 10% spike. Lions went up 23%. And the next best team was Washington and Jacksonville at 10%. So fans wanted to come out to Ford Field. Team was fun. Offense was good. And there you go. Up 23%. So kudos to the Lions on that. And also former Lions head coach, Jimmy Handshake, Jim Schwartz, officially named the Cleveland Browns defensive coordinator today. Uh, Brian Flores was up for the job. Sean Desai was up for the job. But Schwartz gets it. And look, Jim Schwartz, you know, would love nothing more than to become a head coach again. He goes into Cleveland that has a decent roster, turns that defense around. They were horrible this year under Joe Woods. Teams will start looking at Jim Schwartz again. I know it's been a while, and I know that the no, the narrative's out there. No Lions head coach has ever come back to be a head coach anywhere else. But this is a good fit for the uh, for the Browns uh, and Jim Schwartz. Cleveland kind of has a quiet Kevin Stefanski as their head coach. Here comes Mr. Fist Pump. Here comes Mr. Screaming on the sidelines, Jim Schwartz. I think he'll push Stefanski, and I think Stefanski will – Push Schwartz. I like this signing by the Browns, making Jim Schwartz their D.C. Did a great job in Tennessee, led to the Lions head coaching job, did a great job in Philly, and obviously Philly general manager Howie Roseman has some Cleveland ties. His wife is from Cleveland, has family there, so uh, maybe that played a factor. But Jim Schwartz back in the NFL as a coordinator, now the D.C. in Cleveland. Mike Valeni from The Ticket will join us tomorrow. This has been a Tuesday edition of Locked On Lions.